there's a natural curiosity as children are growing up to want to know, to want to understand what's around them, always ask questions. Well, that's what these stories will do, is satisfy that, um, that need. And um, as kids get older, you know, you get to maybe elementary, junior high, um, you start hearing stories that deal with more complex issues as children are better able to understand them. So you're talking about death and about love, um, you're talking about um, responsibility, respect, in a way that's still entertaining, um, but yet it's giving them a lesson in these stories. Um, Coyote at this time comes in in a lot of these stories. He is a character. He's um, Coyote's our trickster, and different tribes have different tricksters. Um, he happens to be ours, and he is um, uh, animal person deity, he's a holy person, so he's, he's a little higher than most animal people, and, um, and he's also carries all of our bad human traits. So um, he's egotistical, he's um, arrogant, he brags about everything, he's stingy, he's, um, you know, he's, he's everything that you can imagine that, that's a bad trait in people, you know, he eats with his mouth open. <laughs> He's just, he's, he's a bad guy, uh, but he exaggerates our human, the bad human traits so that we can learn from those, um, learn from those experiences that he has as he's, you know, exhibiting whatever, greed, um, um, arrogance. So we're, as kids, as kids, when they hear these, they're, they're able to hear that and say, oh, that's not nice, that's, that's not good. So they're learning stories. Um, so he, that's his job. Um, and then once you get into high school, um, young adulthood, you're told the last leg of stories, which are more, um, have a lot of philosophy in them. You're told creation stories. You're told um, complex stories about, um, about our purpose in life. And this is at a point where you're, traditionally, at your age, you would be getting ready to go off, get married, and start your own family. But the, gener the regeneration starts again where you would start telling stories to your children. So that would be the progression of, of storytelling in our society. Um, and these stories were always told as a way to um, help guide help guide young people and um, in a non, maybe non-confrontational, um, uh, gentle way. Um, and it, it, it was fun. It's engaging. Um, when when I was little, I, I heard a lot of these stories that um, that kind of you know um, maybe later on I questioned hmm, how is that possible? <laughs> but at the time, that didn't matter. Um, you know, kids don't ask. Was this scientifically possible? <laughs> They're wanting to be entertained, and they have a they, it satisfies their curiosity. Um, for example, there's there's a story about um, about the sun, and um, you guys remember a couple of nights ago the the full moon that was out, and it was so bright outside that it was it was kind of like um, evening time. It was just a really weird light, but it was bright enough that we could see everything that was you know this, it was just an eerie light. But it's because there was no clouds in the sky and it was a full moon. Well, that was about as bright as it was when um, the animal people um, existed on this earth alone. And these animal people, they just, you know, lived, lived their lives, they wandered around, and they were satisfied with what they had, which was everything except for sunlight. Now, these animal people would, would go about their business, and every now and then one would bump into another, and they would say, Oh, what I really would like is some of that that sunlight that I've heard about. Another would say, oh, I know on the other side of the world that there are people. I hear these beings that have light. Maybe if we go over there, we can take some of that light. Well, one day, Possum came in between this group of people talking about light and said, I shall go get this light. I have a fine bushy tail in which to hide the light in. I shall go. Everybody was stunned to hear Possum stand up because Possum was always so quiet. But they let him go, and Possum started teetering on his way to the land of the sun. And as he went, 
He went over this hill, and when he got there, he reached up and took a little bit of that sun and he tucked it deep into his tail, and as quickly as he could, started scurrying on his way back home. But as he got closer to home, he felt the burn in his tail, and he went faster and faster, and the faster he went, the hotter it got. By the time poor Possum got home, there was nothing left of his tail. There was no fur. That's why Possum's tails look the way they do today. <laughs> oh, and he smelled terrible. Oh dear, said the animal people. Possum has lost his tail and still we have no light. Then Buzzard flew down between all these people and he said, I shall go. I am not so foolish as to put the sun in my tail. I shall put it on the crown of feathers on my head. <laughs> Nobody argued with Buzzard because he was temperamental and mean, so they let him just go. And he flew so high that the sun-keeping people didn't even see him. Because by now they were looking out for thieves. When he got there, he dove down and he caught a little piece of that sun and he tucked it deep into the crown of feathers on his head. And Buzzard started flying on his way back home. And as he flew, that sun got hotter and hotter and he flew faster and faster so fast that by the time he got home, all his feathers were gone. He was left with a big bald spot, which is why buzzards look the way they do today. Oh dear, said the animal people, our brothers, they've done their best and they've tried their hardest, and still we have no light. They thought that this was just meant to be, so they started on their way home. As they were moving away from the center where they were stopped, where they were talking, they heard a tiny voice say, They have done the best that a man can do, but maybe this is a job that a woman can do better than a man. Who is that, they thought. Who was talking to us in such a tiny voice? They quickly went back and started looking around. And on the top of a tall blade of grass, they saw a little bitty spider. She said, it is I, your grandmother's spider. Maybe I was put on this earth to bring you light. Who knows? At least I can try, and if I'm burned up, it won't be as if you have lost one of your warriors here. With that, all those animal people stood in amazement and watched her. She crawled down that tiny blade of grass to the ground, and she felt around. She found some damp clay, and she made a little bowl. She put the bowl on top of her head, Slowly she started to walk towards the land of the sun. And as she went, she wove a piece of web behind her as a way so she could find her way back home. Mm -hmm. And as she got there, she was so tiny that those sun-keeping people didn't even see her. And when she got there, she reached up, she took a little bit of that sun and she tucked it on that bowl on top of her head. And slowly along that same path she had woven, she traveled home from east to west. And as she traveled, the sun grew before her. Oh my goodness, thought the animal people. They said, thank you, Grandmother Spider. We shall always honor and cherish you. Which is why when you look at the web that a, a spider weaves, there's a circle and rays that look like the sun's rays that come out from the center. And why weaving is women's work. But it's also why when potters make their pots, they let them dry slowly in the dark before they put them into the fire of a kiln. Just like Grandmother Spider's pot dried as she traveled on her way to the light of the sun. So, how that explains, you know, sunlight, it also explains respect for all beings, small and large, mean and nice. Um, it gives us an understanding of our place in, in the world um, as, you know, showing respect to everybody else around us, all living beings. Um, coyote, now coyote, so those are animal stories. Now coyote stories, now coyote, you guys know Wiley E. Coyote? <laughs> Roadrunner Wiley E. Coyote? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I was about probably seven, six, seven, I, I had gone home, I spent the summers in Shiprock with my grandparents. And I used to get up like, you know, seven o'clock in the morning 